My advice for anybody that wants to go vegan is to do some research. There's all kinds of good information out there. There's nothing bad about going vegan. In fact, just the opposite. It's a win-win-win for the animals, your health, and the planet. Monk Coleman, Vegan. From Alleys of Darkness to Highways of Enlightenment. Part 1 of 2. Continue watching to find out more. Awesome viewers! Dubardan! This means good day in Bosnian. I am Elvidin. The joyful people of Bosnia and Herzegovina wish you to always be loved and surrounded by divine light. We are so happy to feature the colorful life of vegan bodybuilder, lifestyle coach and meditation instructor Monk Coleman, previously known as Joe Coleman. Mr. Coleman's story paints an arc from difficult beginnings as a directionless young man who got entangled in addiction and the criminal world, to rediscovering and trusting his inner voice, guiding him to become the compassionate, vibrant vegan success he embodies today. Let us begin by finding out how Joe turned into monk. First of all, I consider monk to be my real name now. So when I talk to people from my past, past that call me by my birth name, I have to tell them that's not my name anymore. But uh, some years ago, I was hanging out with a friend and she asked me, what do I do? And I was like, what do you mean, what do I do? She said, you meditate, you are a vegan, you don't smoke, you don't drink, what do you do? And she said, you're like a monk or something, an urban monk. And so we laughed about it. And after I left, I thought that was amazing because she never knew my previous life. So it just showed how far I've come in my life and how much I have transformed my life. I thought, well, let me just take on this new name, reinvent myself, because I no longer resonate with that old name anyways. Before fully adopting his new name, Monk underwent some profound changes in his consumption habits. Over time and through meditation, he discarded all unhealthy practices including eating meat or any other animal products. How and when did it get to that point? There was no motivation for me to stop eating meat. I had no desire to stop eating meat. It didn't even cross my mind. But a few years before I stopped eating meat, I was killing myself with my lifestyle. And I didn't know what to do. And then I started having physical symptoms that I was killing myself and I had to do something. And I don't know why the universe told me to look up meditation, but I did. And when I did and I started sitting down, things started to change in my life. Three years into that, I was sitting down at a restaurant in Oakland and I was looking at the menu and everything was meat-based. And all that was on there that looked appealing was a, a vegetarian omelet. Usually I would have bacon or, or something else with the eggs. But today, today I wasn't feeling it. This is how the universe works. After I ordered my food, my friend said, are you a vegetarian? And at that moment, he was just like, yes. I don't even know why I said it. I had no clue. Yes, I'm a vegetarian. And I felt it. It wasn't just me saying yes. I don't even know why I said yes. Something that came through me said yes. So as soon as I left that breakfast, I started looking at vegetarian bodybuilding because I was already in the gym and I was already training and stuff like that. After he stopped eating meat, Monk felt sure that he was no longer hurting anyone. A few years later though, when he started to notice the word vegan appearing more often during his research into vegetarian bodybuilding, he began to dig deeper only to discover the sad truth about the processes behind other animal products, such as eggs and milk. I stopped eating meat and that was over seven years ago. And from that breakfast, I've never eaten meat since that day. So it was removed immediately. But when I look back, it was three years of me sitting down and connecting that brought a connection to all life instead of just human life that basically told me, look, you don't want to do harm to any other beings. 
on the deepest level. And that's when I looked that up. It said, you no longer want to harm beings that feel like we feel. You made that connection to all life. And that's the problem we have today is we think our, we are so important that no other life matters. And even go as far as different races and different cultures. We put ourselves in, the, in these boxes. Every sentient being has the ability to suffer. And we just choose the ones we want to suffer and which ones we don't want to suffer. And I made that connection that day. This happened when I was 43. So 43 years of conditioning had to be reversed, right? I got the first part about the meat. Now I'm looking at the eggs process and the milk process. Who knew that a cow had to be pregnant to give, have milk? They don't tell us that, right? It's obvious, but it's, we just don't see it. So there has to be a baby involved. And I seen a video on that. And the male baby, you know, turns into, turns into veal. They kill it and sell it as veal. And the females, they get hooked up and they milk them to death as well. And I said, what I researched said is about doing no harm to other beings. Why am I still doing harm to other beings? And that's when I became vegan. His eyes having been opened to the shockingly sorrowful realities of the egg and dairy industries, his compassionate view expanded even further once he realized that he was still using animal products in other areas of life. And I also made a connection at that time to the clothing and the things that I used. Um, I used to live in West Oakland, a pretty rough area, and I had tons of leather shoes, leather jackets, I mean, leather everything. I had no idea I was wearing skin. See, I didn't make that connection either. So I, we loaded up the entire car with all these shoes and jackets and hats, and we put some bananas and oranges in there, went to the hood, popped the trunk, and we gave it all away to the homeless people there. In a 2019 motivational clip for a Shining World Compassion Award recipient, Mercy for Animals, Monk shared his experiences of meditation, becoming vegan, and plant-based bodybuilding. Basically, through my meditation practice, I became reconnected to all life and didn't want to do any harm to any other beings. And at that moment, I became vegan. As far as my bodybuilding goes, I just started competing at age 45. I got picked up by a vegan supplement company. He asked if, if I wanted to be a sponsored athlete. I told him yes. Within six weeks of that time, I was in a competition in Texas competing for the first time but it's mostly just me as far as vegans in the competition. I've been fortunate enough to do well in those competitions, even with my age and not eating a bunch of animal protein. Mr. Coleman, an IFPA, International Federation of Physique Athletes Pro, and WNBF World Natural Bodybuilding Federation Champion in Natural Physique, attributes his success in bodybuilding to the tried and tested characteristics of consistency, hard work, commitment, as well as his switch to the plant-strong diet. Monk said, It was about one year after turning vegan that my body started to change some. I got leaner, healthier, more energetic, and I healed quicker. It felt good. Monk recommends the following to people wanting to go vegan today. My advice for anybody that wants to go vegan is to do some research. There's all kinds of good information out there. There's nothing bad about going vegan. In fact, just the opposite. It's a win-win-win for the animals, your health, and the planet. With each new discovery on the road to veganism, Monk's compassionate lifestyle keeps bringing about positive physical changes, as well as deeper insights into life itself, a further opening of his heart and mind. Through meditation, it became apparent to Monk that there are forces stronger than our conditioned lives if we allow ourselves to tap into them. To learn more about Monk Coleman, please visit monketernal.com. Beloved Supreme Master Ching Hai pointed out the benefits of meditation during a conference in Auckland, New Zealand in 2000. Once we go into a higher level, we can look down and see what's wrong in our life and we can fix different departments and make our life better. That's why meditation people, they become happier and their life smoother, they clearer, you know, everything better for them automatically. Seek you first the kingdom of God 
and all the things shall be added into you. That's what it means. Thank you.